Well, hello again. Another video. This is on a couple of requests I've had of different people. <coughs> One of them is regards uh, this letter had here. And what he's asking is, have you done a video tutorial on track, loco track sharing? I mean, running several locos simultaneously, but have to avoid collisions. Well, there is a way of doing it, in a way. Uh, the other one is, uh, I was just looking at some reliable methods of using timings. Locos tend to not to stick to layout speeds, and you run a loco time, start and stop at the halt, which programs at 50 seconds to cruise. Second time, it's either over or under the halt positions. Well, this is all in programming. Uh, but there's something else which I want to go into is, as you might call, swing. Not what you might think, but what it actually is, is when I built this, which is originally here, then I put that on and then I put the back bed on as well, is in those times when I did this, this is nine years ago when I started this, locos were here like this, nine inches long. Right, this is another one which is about nine inches long, but now we're getting locos, um, diesel locos especially, not so much the steam ones. And what it actually is is what I call the swing. Now, this is a uh, 1.58 GWR, but this is what we're talking about swing there. And what happens is, more so is we just have these APTs out now, and things like that, where the nose is actually sticking out here as it goes around on a bend, and it's hitching platforms. Now I did have a problem with this, so those people who are building scenery, this is particularly for them. Now, I can see here, I've got one part of my uh, pedestrian cro level crossing there. What happens is, as the train goes this way, it isn't too bad, but when the train hits that bend, this bit starts to swing out here. Now, I've got, like, my princess classes, and what happens is, is it's swung out here. Sometimes it'll catch that as it goes past. You don't seem to notice it much. But when you're bringing the train back again, the swing means that the cab is over here, and it's hitting that, and it'll stop the loco. So, very beware of all, anything on the the track side, I had this trouble with, like this particular thing here. Those are alright because they're straight. This is double. So I had to move this right out so that the swing of the locos doesn't catch that signal. So this is a thing just be aware of when, you, when you're putting stuff on the track is make sure that you've got all the coaches up. Is that my, my station here? Look at that. Look at the gap. But look at the swing on that. Uh, another thing is, I've just bought a new loco. This is the 170 Central Trains, weathered. Uh, I was in the Hobby Goblin stop at see Steve. I had regularly in there. I was in there for quite a bit of the day. He's got dozens and dozens of second-hand locos in there. And I spotted this one. He's got, this is a two-car one, and there's three-car. Now, as you notice, my little station here that I've got here, is basically for two cars. If I get three, the, the other one's hanging over the end of there. So I bought this one. This is a lovely loco. I'm very pleased with this. I've only had it a couple of days, but I've done programming on this as well. But say that this is the thing is some of these locos are nine, ten inches long. These are a foot long. That is a foot long. My westerner is a foot long. My uh, 153, which is a single coating, is a foot long like that. So you've got to be very careful on this swing. Same as that, you can see that there. Well, when it gets to that bit there, it would actually hit that. So this is why these have been moved this way a little bit. I did have also a problem with that one. Is when most of the steam trains, as they're coming across here, they're swinging that way and they were catching that. So that had to be moved over a bit as well so that it misses. Uh, the loco when it goes past 
But this is just something to be aware of when you're doing your track layouts. I think this is mine's only small. I think it's people who've got large layouts, same as my platform is there. Most people platforms are that way, so you don't it doesn't involve too much, but like these little ones here, which is by the Hornby platform like this, and this is what happens is you get the gaps. You can't be do nothing about it, it's just the way it physically it is is made. So that is a little bit of my call about swing. Um, what I did with mine when I built this, I got a coach and I marked it out where it was going to be on the, on the layout. Now, the thing is, I've got 10-inch coaches and I've got 12-inch coaches. So that when I bought them, they were 9, 10-inch coaches. Now, they, they get bigger. Uh, so, just be aware of that. Right. As regards running locos on track, right. What I've done set up is this one, my class 24 blue, and over there is my class 24 green. Now one of the things it actually says in the handbook, if you have to look at it, and it actually says is that when controlling multiple locos in the header, one with the lowest maximum speed will dictate the maximum speed of all the locos. I've played with this a long, long while. I don't use it so much, but like double headers. So normally I'd have that one over there stuck on the back of this one. Now what you've got with Pro is normally, if you go to this one here, which is the trains there, you've got that. Now what happens normally is this is the one we're talking about, the blue. So all you do is click here and you get that and that says it's going to go forward. If I click this one, like that, that's going forward. But what you can do in Pro is you can reverse them. So what you have to do to reverse that is go to this end here and click that. This little, and then what it's done is turn it reverse. So I can actually have that one there where the, the nose is there and the other one with the nose this end. So that... The, that is going backwards and that one's going forward. And they work perfect, no problem at all. But what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to put them both together like this. Now one thing that I've done is basically the, the trains, to me, the trains have to be identical in everything. The CVs in that one are identical to that one. But also, the actual fact the decoder in that one is the same as the decoder in that one. These are made both by Batman, so that they are both... Sorry, I think the Hornby, sorry. Uh, they are both the same identical trains. They do have different uh, characteristics, but that is what it'll do. So what I'm going to do now, if I now do this and click this, what I'll now get is a little green thing up there. So I control that one which will control that one or control that one which will control that one it doesn't matter which way around and the thing is is what happens is if one starts catching up with the other one you can't adjust this because what it does is adjust the other one as well so what we're going to do is just got them here like this i won't put the lights on nothing like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the two of them on cruise here they go there's one and there's the other and one way I can actually check is when that train comes round to here and that one should be round there. Here they come. Usually they are, it's a bit out at the moment, but what will actually happen is they do, do, they do this. So you can actually run two trains together like this. Like this. So all you've got to do is to stop one, like this. Yeah and they both stop together. That is a way of doing it. Now then, one of the things that we, most of us know, any of, there is a thing called block signalling. The only thing with block signalling, as a lot of cases at the moment, you've got to cut one piece of track there and put an isolated joint in there. So you actually have a, a switch that controls that side and that side. Now, what happens is, is that when the train hits the, the blank spot here, the train will stop. 
Now that's all right if you've got non-sound trains. But when you think of it, when you do cut that, you take the power off the track. So if you've got sound trains, they will actually turn the sounds off as well. So it all work, works well with non-sound, non but if you've got sound ones, you've got to have a problem. So, but there is a lot of these sound things on the market, so uh, there is something that could be coming out, but I can't say much about it at the moment. So that is uh, one of the things with doing like double headers. The other way is actually to run the two trains, but when you've got that one running, this one, you can you put that on full speed, this one you can control by your railmaster. So you can actually slow it down, bring it up, but the case may be. And then all you've got to do for this is to go back into here, go onto those two there, click on that and take it out, click on that and take it out, click that, and it takes the double heading off. So that is one thing you can do with it. Now one of these, another part of this uh, gentleman wrote to me about was regard this business on programming. As you know, I do loads and loads of programming. Sometimes it can take me hours to get it right. Now one of the things is, is when I run my trains, I don't go from cruise to stop because one of the things is the CB4, which is the deceleration, can depend on where the train will stop. And the faster it's running, the longer it's going to stop. Whereas what I do is I put them on full speed and then I actually put them to shunt speed and then stop. And I'll show you this by this one. Say so this is a lovely train, this one is. Come up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on full speed. Now this is not the sound, but the thing is, I've been on these, because there's one goes from crew, and that is the sound they make. Not like a diesel train, that's the sound they actually make. So that to me sounds quite good. Now what I'll do now is when it gets over to that signal box, I'll put it on shunt. And then when it comes around here, I know exactly where to stop it to a degree. Do you see the time it took to get that? And that's set at 10. The CV for deceleration is, is 10. The acceleration is set at 20. This one here is set at 120 on acceleration, basically because it's normally pulling all wagons. So it looks more realistic when it's going around the track. Because it's got a set of wagons it normally goes with. So that's how I set mine up. Now then, when it comes to doing a program for this, the basics of it is, if I just turn the lights off, right, is when you come to this bit here, what you've got to do is you've got to click it like this, and it'll say, whatever you do from now on, it'll record. So you click that. We'll now click the lights like that, to turn them on. We now set it off at cruise speed. Let it build up speed. It takes about there before it builds up its full speed. No, it's just kicked in now. And what I'm going to do is take it round to that signal box again. Put it on shunt. We'll come round to here. And that's pretty good, right? And now we turn the lights off. Like that. What we do then is where, where it says there's flashing, all you've got to do is do this and it says, would you like to see what you've done? And that is the programme we've just done. So you've got to give it a name. So we call this, uh, let's call it, uh, it, it's actually Liverpool, this one's going to be, so we just call it Live, right? We now click the green tick and do this. 
and is now done. I, I, the one I'm going to show you is, is down here, but what it actually is, is on normally you do this, because they got to do all this with Pro. So now I've got Find Live in here. This is always a bit changing it, getting this thing to work properly. There it is, live there, right? We've got that, and all I've got to do now is click the blue tick. So the thing is, it's sitting where it should do. Now, one of the things that I do, is if I can just find one, uh, is around my layout, there's one over there you can just see. There's some over there, and I use these, which are part of cocktail sticks. And what I do is stick them in the ground there and paint them white. That is the marker where the nose of the loco is going there. Same as like this, there would be one, there isn't one here, but I know where it is, but you put one there and the buffers are exactly where it is. Because you've got to start these off exactly the right spot. Otherwise, what happens is if it moves forward a bit here and try it again, it'll move a bit forward or the back, wherever it may be. So what we're going to do now is we're now going to click this. And there's the lights come on. Now it's going to start off. As I've said before when doing programs, make sure your track is clean. Because all you need is one blip and the whole thing goes up to up the swanny. Because I've had them where they blip here and when it gets around to come around here, it doesn't stay where it should be. So this is it just going around like this. And what we've got to do now is when we've done this, you know, it's slowing down. This might work, might not. So what we've got now is do this and see where it stops. Which is virtually correct there, right? Now what you've got then is, is turn the lights off, that's the program done. So what we've got there is if we go to the programs here and find live, which is the one we want, There it is, there, like that. This stop here, where people are putting just seconds in, you can put in parts of a second, there. So that is at 42.90.85. We'll just put this, just for now, what we'll do is just do this, and we we'll just change this to there. We'll just change this bit here to 50, like that. This is where you've got to play. So you do that bit there, you save it, like this, and you come out again, and then you make sure your train is exactly where it should be. I've got my, that's what my marker is really, if my logo's there. For this one here, that signal is the marker for that one there. So what we do now is we do it again, we find live. There it is, live. We now click it again and we see what difference that made. It's just a fiddling figures, that's all it is. But one of the things I've also done, this one has now got a train announcement added to it. Remember we've changed the timing on this, so this most probably will stop short. It's happened, it's, it's done pretty well, but see, there again, it's still gone over, so it's just a matter of fiddling the, the, the timing to get it exactly right. So this one now, what I've also got, as you know, I've got train announcements, which is this one here. Now this one is this, and it's on platform two, and it's departing there. Please know the railways, and what I've got there is I put in, I click this one, which is two coaches, click that one, click the buffy car, and I click the mining gap. 
And what I do then is I play this. Now what I actually do is once I've set it up, <coughs> I get a stopwatch and I count how long it takes for this train announcement to work. So that I've saved, right? Now, how I found that is if I just come over here a second, ooh, reach over here, is this. I went on Google and found out where the central trains run. And there's one from Cardiff up to Nottingham. There's this one which I've done, which is actually Birmingham to La La Liverpool Lime Street because it's only got one or two places in because you've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten stations you can put in there. And there's another one which goes all the way down there which goes over to Norwich. And there's another one which comes from Birmingham and goes down to Stansted. So if you think of that one, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That would actually work as well. You could work that one as well. And that's how I actually operate my uh, programming for these uh, locos once I've saved it so what I've got there is I've timed that at 32 so what I would normally do with that is I would actually start the program as we've just done I turn the lights on and then on the stopwatch I count how many seconds that program worked so actually it's 32 seconds once the 32 seconds are up then I start the train. When it comes back to, I'll show you what it is in here. If I go into here, which is, I forgot what it is now. I think it, it could be, could be Liverpool. I can't remember. Have a look. I've lost what it was. Tell you the truth. Now Liverpool. See, that's the tra that's the one for the Liverpool one there, right? If I now come back in here and go back up here, it's, I think it's called Central Trains, this one is. Central Trains, that one there, right? And then notice there, it is zero for that, for the lights, and then at 0.2 of a second, it then starts the programme, and then at 30.35 seconds, the train will do its little bit. And that's how I, I build my train announcements into the system. So if I now go out of here, and we've got the train there, so now I actually just click this, because this is what my little train does. The next train to depart on platform two will be the 1145 Regional Railway Service to Liverpool Lime Street, calling out Wolverhampton, Stafford, Crewe, Runcorn, and Liverpool Lime Street only. This train is formed of two coaches. First class accommodation is located at the front of the train. A buffet service is available on this train. Please mind the gap when boarding this train. And let's start off. And do its little bit. I say this sounds just like how they do sound because I've been on them. They don't sound like a diesel train. I think it's diesel electric. But I think this goes around a few times, this one does. I spend hours doing these. Sometimes also it's best if, if you run the train first, warm it up a bit. So this is, this most probably... So it's done that, it's done short. It shouldn't do, but it has done. It's a bit infuriating, but that's uh, that's the way you do them. And next time I do it, it'll most probably do it exactly where it should go. It's just that um, the, sometimes the warmth of the train running them in does it. So, for now, uh, 
If you want me, I'm on 01782 302194. My email address is there as well. Uh, please subscribe and if you go to my channel, which is Ormby Rail Master Brian News, go to the icon, click the icon and just under the blue balloon you'll see a donation button if anybody requires to give me some money towards doing some of this type of programming. So if, you, if you've got anything to do with Railmaster that you have a problem with, just give me a call. I'm here seven days a week, basically. Um, I'll try and answer any questions or go on, you, on TeamViewer and actually sort some of your problems out for you. I did speak to this gentleman about this other stuff and he didn't know about grouping. Now, when you're talking about multiple groupings, same as this here, right? What you can actually do is you can do call like mine here. I've got one called Favourites. And what that is, all my favourite trains, which I have, I can put them into this into this group. And the grouping is quite easy to do. Uh, but that's... So you do this one here, go to uh, Electric. There's only one electric train, which is my 87, which is over there. And what you can actually do is you can put all, as I've done there with the three of them. If I go to the demo one again which is this these three here what I can do with this I can turn this on turn this on turn this on and what I can do now is I actually click all these like this and all the three will run together there we go look there's those two running there that one there so you can actually control all your trains so if I wanted to stop the blue one like this and then stop the green one like this and then I can stop this one so I can control all my trains by just having the ones that I want there they're more easy controlled most say I've only got the two tracks some people got four tracks and that is one way you can actually do it is just controlling them that way around so for now I will see you again soon and goodbye bye